Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. We are making a mold today. I found this gorgeous tray from TK Maxx. I've actually had it a year. It comes with a soap dispenser and a toothbrush holder, but I stole the tray from the bathroom because I figured it would make the most beautiful mold. I did check it out. There's no signs, logos, stamps. So hopefully I'm not breaking any copyright rules, but it is a gorgeous size. It's just 20 centimeters across and just under nine centimeters wide. So once I've made a mold of this, I feel like it's going to make a beautiful trinket tray made from resin or made from jesmonite, either way. Now I am a Let's Resin Silicon Rubber Ambassador, so all of the details will be in the description box below. Go check that out if you wanna get yourselves some silicon rubber. I am loving this stuff. So we all know as well that Let's Resin sent me their mold housing kit. I have two of them, but honestly, I, I couldn't work it out. So by the time I'd made the mold housing, I need these to be half size. <laughs> I need these to be half size because when I actually created the mold housing, it was just way too big. If I took one piece away, it was too small. If I added one piece, it was too big. So yes, I am gonna be reverting back to my plastic foam board. The first thing I needed to do was draw around the tray to give me an idea of how much of this foam board I really want to cut. So I went ahead, took a pair of scissors and just cut it out exactly on a piece of paper. And what you wanna do now is line up your foam board to the length that you want and then go over by about half an inch. Now this is something I completely forgot to do if you watched the last mold video that I made. I cut it exactly. You don't wanna cut it exactly, you want it to go over so that when it comes to building your actual mold, ooh, <laughs> I know I went a bit skew with you on the video, sorry. When it comes to cutting your actual mold, you've got an overlap. And this is what I mean by an overlap, each edge, when you, when you put your length and your width together, it's really so much easier to have them overlapping at the corners so you can really get it, get the glue in there and get it solid. Now, this is one step I forgot and I did learn this from the incredible Resin Ace. Next thing I did was I actually stuck some double-sided tape onto the tray. The base of my mold housing is going to be more of that foam board, but I really don't want this tray to, um, rise up what's the word float I don't want the tray to float up through the silicon I just want to make sure that barely any silicon gets down and underneath so once I've cut out my two long walls and my two short walls it is time to glue them in place honestly it's fiddly I'm not gonna lie I am getting better and I'm getting more used to it the first wall is the fiddliest but once you get that second wall in place, it just holds its own and it's so much easier. Make sure you go up all four corners like you see here and go along all four lengths on the outside. And you can see some light coming in there at the bottom, but trust me, that is completely clogged with glue. So worst case scenario, we're gonna have to do a little bit of trimming. I actually remembered for the first time in ages, I've got all of this old silicon. If any of you were with me at Halloween, you'll know that I did a huge Halloween silicon mold of a pumpkin and it was a disaster it, it was a total disaster the pumpkins were floating like it couldn't have gone any more wrong but we got there in the end that's the thing we got there in the end what that video left me with was a whole heap of just unusable silicon and I've kept it I've kept hold of it since Halloween finally Finally, I'm gonna put it to good use. This is just gonna help me reduce the amount of fresh silicon that I'm gonna to have to use for this mold. This mold's gonna take a lot, which is why I needed to use the foam board to minimize it. Now I am using pink mica powder in my silicon this time because yeah, it's Valentine's and I figured it would be really, really pretty. But of course you can use any color you fancy. I do try to color all of my molds now so it kind of gives me a reference. Like all of my ocean themed silicon molds were blue. You know that kind of way, I don't know, it just keeps me in track. The first thing I'm gonna do is fill up the inside of this tray and it takes so, much silicon it is honestly when you create molds like this this is where a lot of the silicon goes is to the inside of your vessel then it's time to just chuck in all of those old chunks of silicon which by the way 
are still really soft and juicy, which is great because I made that in October. They've been sitting on my windowsill ever since and they are still super soft, squishy, gorgeous, almost like I just poured them yesterday. But here it is. This is the theory behind it. <laughs> They're going to take up some space, which means I need less fresh silicone. Then it was just time to continue pouring my silicone in. I love watching this. I don't know about you guys. When I use mica powder in the silicone, it leaves the most beautiful patterns and it's just so pretty to look at when you actually pour it. I wish it stayed like that, but it doesn't. I guess you could go back in, you know, later and create a pattern in the top. My first initial fear when I was pouring this silicone is that, ugh, those chunks are floating, they're floating. I'm gonna need to do two coats. So when I finished pouring, you can see them poking their little heads out of the top of the silicone. And I figured, do you know what? I'll come back in a few hours and I'll just do another layer on top if they don't sink. But this is a close up of the bubbles. Now I'm not even sure you can see it. Micro bubbles actually self popping. This silicone is bubble free and it is beautiful. Now here's the thing, result, this was the next day and those silicone chunks did sink. So I never had to go in with a second layer of silicone. So I really did get away with it. I really felt really lucky at this point, like I didn't need to use any more silicone. It was such a result and I was really, really happy. Then it was time to wedge it, <laughs> wedge it? What's the word I'm looking for? Get it away from the mold housing. It comes away really quite easily. And then it was time to just cut around the excess. Now, the thing is with this tray, I mentioned it at the beginning. It's not, did I mention it at the beginning? I'm not sure. It's not the most perfectly formed, rectangular, superb, sublimely measured out tray. It is not flat. It's a little bit wonky. Now, of course, when you're buying it as a toothbrush dispenser and a soap dispenser, you may not notice, but now that I've come to want to mold it, I'm thinking that tray's not even straight. <laughs> like that tray's not even straight. That's probably why nobody put their name on it because <laughs> it was probably the seconds. You know, some of these companies, they make things and they're actually seconds. So they're like, mm, okay, that's gonna go there or that's gonna go there. But already I knew it wasn't as straight as I would have liked it to be. Having said that, it is what it is. I hate that saying, but it kind of is what it is. We've made a beautiful silicon mold of it. And I was just really confident that I could then use this going forward to make more trays. Now, here's the thing. That mold was matte. It was not shiny. That means the silicon is going to be matte, not shiny, which means when you do resin in the future, your resin will be matte, not shiny. This is the one downside to using this tray because it is matte to start with. Now, what you could do here is create another tray using the mold, coat that in resin, and then take another mold of it. That will give you your shiny surface if that is what you're looking for. I have sped this section up for you because believe you me, you do not want to sit through seven minutes, seven minutes it took me to pipe all of these individual hearts onto the silicon mold. Mistake after mistake, I was getting wet wipes, wiping them off, I wasn't happy. In the end, I decided to use a cocktail stick just to create the shapes that I wanted. This colour scheme was fully inspired by my recent video which went out on Monday which was the cellophane party bags in resin. I really thought the red and the white against each other were going to pop and I figured, you know what, let's reverse it, do some white hearts, red background, see how that comes out. Now it did take a while to get all these hearts piped in but it's worth it, it's so worth it. The one thing I will say is that I overdid it on the white pigment. I, I poured way too much in, should have measured properly but I did overdo it and what I decided to do then was leave it to cure up for an hour. I decided those hearts were still too wet. Even after 30 minutes, they were too wet. So I left it for a whole hour before I came in and I poured the red background and this is when things just felt like it was falling apart. I thought, I've come this far, I've made a whole silicon mold and now I'm gonna mess up on the jesmonite. The red was not playing ball. This is the jesmonite mixture according to the instructions, you know, one to 2.5. You really should only have 2% pigment for your red red or your black black or your white white, 2%. 
Guys, when I tell you this bottle exploded and I put way too much pigment in. Now I tried as much as I could to scoop some out and just get it into a silicone cup. Um, but yes, there was way too much pigment in the red and there was way too much pigment in the white. Some days it just goes like that, you know? It just does. And really, are you even creative if you don't make a mess and make mistakes? <laughs> That's, that's just the way I'm sticking to it. That's my story. If I if the judge calls me in, that's my story. I'm creative. You cannot expect me to be neat. But yes, I was not giving up. I did have an internal cry. Because I was like, no, why now? The Jesmonite was setting up on me. It was setting in front of my eyes. I was struggling to get it down into the sides of this tray. Now the sides of this mold, same as the tray, they have a lip that comes up and over. So straight away I thought, that is not a very big opening. How am I gonna get this Jesmonite down in there? But you know what, I just shoved it in. I decided we are not playing games. I'm not arguing with you, Jesmonite. I am just gonna whack you in there, shove you down using my silicone tool. And then I'm going to shake what I can shake. What I don't want to do is lift this off of the surface in any way because that is going to dislodge the white hearts that I've already laid down. And yeah, the whole thing was a drama in my head. But you know what? In reality, it all worked out. So everything's everything's okay in the end. Because I'd put too much pigment in the red, I left this for two hours now usually things do sweat but at this point I'd gone past the point of caring because <laughs> I figured I'd ruined it anyway I left it for two hours I kept coming up and checking and it just wasn't setting because I'd put too much pigment in and look at this guys the white hadn't even cured after one hour that is how much pigment had spilled in from the white and from the red so Please don't be like me. Measure and weigh, you know? Get your bowl on the weighing scales and measure accurately your 2% pigment. Because, you know, sometimes you just get a bit like, oh, I know what I'm doing. I'll pour it in by eye. No, <laughs> don't do that. All is well in the world. It all worked out. It all came out. And the silicone mold is pretty easy to clean. Now, because of that, because of the wet white heart it has left a texture on the surface that i was not 100 percent happy with some of the red has bled down and under the white hearts and i figured the only way to make my heart happy is to sand this baby back so all you want to do is get some high grit sandpaper i'm using 1000 so that it doesn't leave scratches in my surface i haven't got the time or the energy for that and some water and just give it a really good sand now i am sanding this on camera in my craft room for you guys but i do end up transferring it out into my bathroom i have a bucket in which i do all my sanding it's just easier so yeah give it a good sand until you are happy I really figured that this would also flatten the white hearts a bit and not leave them as textured. I mean, it's absolutely nowhere near perfect, but it is handmade. It's a handmade silicone mould. It's a handmade tray. What do you want, you know? <laughs> I keep reminding myself, nothing is perfect. Nothing can be perfect. Not unless I'm working a proper industrial factory line and I'm having these churned out by a machine. Okay. We are using this brand new wax. Now, this is from Homeware Decor Company. If you guys actually saw um, my shorts here on YouTube, I've got a shorts that's just gone out. Oh my gosh, they sent me a beautiful bag of all of their greens because you guys know I ran out of the zen. Um, they saw my video and just sent me some and I am just grateful and blessed. I would have bought some anyway, but yes, they decided not only to send me the Zen Green, they sent me a whole bag of greens. Like all of their greens now I have, and I'm so excited about it. But they popped in their new finishing wax for Jesmonite and plaster equivalents, and I figured I'd give it a go. Now, you guys know I don't use wax that often. It's not something I usually use. I did revert to using the Jesmonite sealer the whole time, but it looks great, it's acting great, it goes on smoothly, it leaves a beautiful finish, like an, an, a streak-free finish, which I know a lot of people are looking for. But here it is, I'm, I'm okay with it. 
I, I'm definitely not obsessed. Okay, there, I said it. <laughs> I'm not obsessed. I do love the mould though. I think the mould offers possibilities. I'm definitely going to keep my eye out for some alternative tray, trinket tray buys that I could potentially get from the likes of you know, B&M, The Range, you know, TK Maxx, HomeSense, all of these places always have these kind of soap dispenser thingies. And I think there's potential there, guys. You know, as long as it's not branded, it's got no logo on, you're not breaking any copyright rules. As far as I know, that that is my knowledge as far as I know. If I am wrong and there's absolutely no sign, logo, name or brand on these products, if I'm wrong about that, let me know in the comment section if we can't make a mold of them, even though they're non-branded. Because the way I see it, even if you went to a thrift store or what we call a charity shop over here and they had a tray that looked like this, you wouldn't even know where it was from. So shh, just don't tell anyone. <laughs> I hope you've liked this video or enjoyed this video. I hope you felt inspired to make a silicon mold of something that's laying around your house. The mold, I love. The actual result, I don't I'm not obsessed about the reason being the finish. The finish on the Jesmonite was weak. I over poured the pigment. I didn't do a great job overall in creating my own tray. And that is why I'm not obsessed. Will that change next week? Probably yes, because I'll do it properly. <laughs> when you do it properly, you get more obsessed. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, I'm going to stop talking. I will see you all on Saturday. Now, if you're still here, remember that Saturday is the Valentine's collaboration. So definitely get your links over to me by Instagram or email. On Saturday, the 11th of February, I will share them to the playlist and then I will give you the playlist to share in your description box. Alternatively, if you are taking part over on Instagram, be sure to use the hashtag. All of the details are over on Instagram. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to the collaboration, the Valentine's Day collaboration to see what everyone has made. And I will see you all then. Bye. Mm. Stay.